What's up guys, Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's episode, I'm flying my E-Flight EC1500. That's right, we're starting things off with a bang here. I just got back from winter break from college and I'm super excited to get back to flying. I thought I'd go ahead, lay it all on the line and fly my nicest airplane that I have. Now, this plane has a lot of cool technology on board, of course. It has the uh, AS3X technology and safe, as well as a full light kit and a steerable nose wheel. So a lot of amenities that I'm really not used to. We also do, of course, have full flaps. Um, so it's gonna be a really interesting plane and I actually haven't flown it out here at the park before. I usually take it to my local RC club, but this place is completely vacant as it always is while I'm flying. There is very little wind. It's obviously a beautiful day to be out here and flying, and I'm super excited to go ahead and do so. I want to take you around this plane real quick, just show you what we've got running inside here. Everything is pretty much stock. You might be thrown off by the paint scheme here. This one was actually redone uh, by my buddy Joey before he sold me this airplane, so it doesn't have the original Coast Guard scheme on it. And we can take the hatch off here. You can see we've got the AS3X receiver right Right here on um, this bound up to my TX16S and then the steerable nose wheel servo right there all these wires that control the light system and the flap servos as well as the main battery lead that kind of pigtails out into there the battery that I'm running in here is a 2500 milliamp hour uh, Admiral four cell battery I don't know the C rating I think it's like 50 C or something like that um, but that's good for about five to seven minutes of flying time depending on how hard I'm pushing this thing and this thing has plenty of power on four cell I've also I've also flown this thing on three cell, however, the experience just isn't quite the same. Uh, so I guess I really have to recommend uh, the four cell battery um, all the way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the hatch back on. We're gonna get everything plugged in and we'll get up in the air. All right, guys, so we are good to go. You can even see we've got these slow droop flaps there. That's super cool. We will be utilizing those, but this thing has plenty of power, and of course I have plenty of space to take off. The only variable here is the ground, which is gonna be interesting because it's aerated grass, and I'm not sure how this thing's gonna roll, but you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and steer. I do have differential thrust on this, however, I'm not using it because it's just really not too necessary. So we just went ahead and turned around. It's a little bouncy, but we're gonna go ahead and get up in the air. Okay, just got hit by the wind there. And I'm gonna get us out of the sun so you guys can see it better. And this thing being a uh, styrofoam material, unlike foam board, is a lot lighter than typical cargo planes this size, even something with uh, two engines. So it definitely does get bounced around in the wind more, but I'm flying at a quarter throttle right now and you can see this thing is performing just fine, is commanding. And this is obviously best to fly in no wind, and uh, you can definitely feel it, like I said, but again, no real issues. These are just crosswind passes. But yeah, the biggest thing that was a selling point for me when I bought this off of Joey was how smooth the throttle delivery is. You can see this thing just taken up there, and the motors sound so, so smooth. That's something really cool um, that you don't get a lot when you're just making uh, DIY airplanes from foam board because there's always a little bit of vibration somewhere and um, you're not going to really get the same experience. So this is a lot different, even though it's a very similar spec, it's a lot different than the guinea pig. And uh, there also is a considerable amount of static thrust up for grabs, even on these smaller like six or seven inch props. Um, so the propeller size is smaller, obviously that makes the motor KV higher. Uh, to get the same amount of performance, but the, also the propellers are five blade props. So they look super cool and they're actually really, really functional. The only red flag for that is of course, if I ever break one, I'm not just gonna be able to replace it um, unless I buy some extras. And of course, being something more proprietary built for this airplane, they're gonna be more expensive. And there's less generic options available. But as you can see here, this thing is just cruising through the sky. It also carries the speed really well, even on um, one gliding, and that's really nice too. I'm basically just flying bank and yank, however, um, as soon as you add that rudder in, the rudder is huge on this thing. Um, it does react, and honestly, you can pretty much fly this rudder only, um, except for you need a little bit of counter aileron uh, to keep this thing from rolling into the ground because the rudder is so high up off of the center roll. That was half throttle right there. 
I'm gonna do a full throttle pass for you here. Let me go ahead and work it around the circuit here. Okay, I almost got into a dive there just because I hit the wind weird. And again, as soon as you roll your wings over, you're susceptible to really diving down because of course the wings aren't creating lift when they're sideways. So here's a full throttle. Look at that thing go, and it, it sounds so cool. You can, um, it, it honestly doesn't get louder when the throttle's um, up there, and you can just hear kind of the wind rushing through the props a little bit more um, prominently, I guess. Yeah, but this plane is very interesting. Again, it really does not like the wind. Um, I am fighting it a lot, of course. It can fly in the wind, but it's just the experience is you know, not quite there. It's honestly pretty forgiving other than that. You just really gotta be on your game. I'm sorry I'm flying over there into the sun. I'll go ahead and alter my pattern. Go a little more this way. And this plane is about the top of the kind of category for planes that I would fly out here at the park. Um, obviously, if you can keep it within the legal limits, um, then technically it's legal, but, you know, something like this crashes, it's more of a liability than if something like a little FT Scout or um, a storage or something like that were to crash. So, you got to keep that in mind there as well um, when you're flying out in public spaces versus like a typical RC club. Yeah, everything is just so predictable. This thing tracks straight as an arrow, and that's one of the main advantages to buying a plane versus building it. You don't get that satisfaction that you made it with your own hands, uh, but it definitely flies a lot more consistently. And of course, this has been engineered like crazy um, and released by a prominent hobby brand such as E-Flight. So um, you know that you're getting the best of the best versus something that you're just piling together with foam board. So I like them both. Um, Personally, this is a more expensive route for me, and I'm a financially conscious hobbyist, so I tend to do most of my stuff home-built, or at least somewhat um, of a DIY project, but it's always nice to treat yourself every once in a while, and this thing is such a cool airplane. Um, I would definitely recommend picking one up if you can find one locally. Um, another cool thing that I also realized as I started going to my local RC field is that there's a lot of classified ads um, on like the message boards at the shelter at my specific RC um, field. So if you're looking for something like this and you wanna buy it used and get it for a really good price, you might check out going, um, check out at your uh, local RC field because they could have some really good deals on stuff that people are just trying to get rid of because a lot of those enthusiasts have a lot of these um, planes that they you know maybe don't fly as much um, and they obviously just don't scrap them like they're a foam board. Um, so. They're looking to get rid of them, and honestly, they like to see it, especially locally, going to someone um, who's advancing the hobby, or who's looking for their next step so they can be a mentor for you as well. So definitely recommend uh, becoming engaged with your local RC community. Um, it's a great way to not only get good deals on hobby products, but also um, to really uh, further your experience in the hobby and find flying buddies, things like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up for a landing here. I think I'm just gonna do a crosswind because this thing can slow down fairly easily. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the flaps off. Actually, I'm gonna go into the wind for this landing. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the flaps off because uh, it doesn't really need them. Uh, you can pretty much just do a full landing and when the flaps are on, um, things can get hairy. All right, so that wasn't beautiful. Um, just because again, I just cut it and glided in you kind of want to motor in a little bit more for the future um, But no big deal. I got it down in one piece a little bit of dirt on my propeller here I'm gonna go ahead and take it up one more time We'll do a few more circles maybe mess with the flaps a little bit if the wind is cooperating and then we will continue um, into a full landing All right up and away we go. Starting to feel the battery sag. Um, no big deal though, but um, we're just kind of getting to the end of the flight. I'm not going to push it anymore. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and walk a little bit closer so I have more room behind me should this landing run over a bit. A 
And this time I'm actually going to go ahead and motor it in, as I said I would before. Um, and that's going to obviously uh, make the descent angle a little bit more reasonable. And there we go. Either way, it's just going to be a little bit of a thud, but that's no worries because, of course, um, that's just going to be how it is when you're landing a five pound RC plane onto rough ground. All right, one more time. I'm going to go ahead and take off with half laps this time. And there we go. That thing just shot it right up in the air. Flaps go up and we are again up in the air, getting into the pattern here. And now I'm going to try to land with half flaps. You definitely don't need full flaps on a day like this. And with the wind, things can get unpredictable. So I'm not going to um, mess with that. Okay, half flaps on. And then we should be able just to just slow right down. Or a little high. I'm going to go ahead and go around. You can see it just shoots right out of there once you give it a burst of power. And turning upwind is a little bit, a little bit difficult. All right, so here's the final landing. Good approach. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit, but thankfully we're going into the wind. You can see how it goes right into high alpha. And look at that, what a save. <laughs> I almost got hairy, I was, I was looking there, looking at it a little speechless, honestly, thinking I was about to lose this thing. But thankfully, you have that four cell power, so you're capable to make a recovery like that, and we're all good. All right, so there we are, back on the ground, safe and sound. Close call there, but hey, that sometimes is how it is when the wind is unpredictable. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this thing flew. Next time, I'm probably going to take it out to my local RC field on a super calm day, and we'll be able to get a more accurate uh, judgment of this thing's flight characteristics. But other than that, I had a great time flying here with the EC1500. As always, I'll leave a link down below if you want to check this thing out. I believe it is not quite discontinued yet, but it is a little bit of an older um, model in eFlight's fleet, so um, I'll go ahead and leave a link to that, as well as to my buddy Joey's channel, I think he has an Instagram, and potentially a YouTube as well, and he does some really cool stuff over there uh, with Phone Boy RC. So that's it for the video guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next one.